Hello, Michael here with another Random Man tutorial. This week we're going to be looking at uh, very simple holdouts. Um, and full disclosure, I'm fairly new to doing holdouts. Um, I figured out how to do it pretty simply though, uh, just with an image plane. If you're looking to do this with an environment HDRI image, um, I've yet to get to that to work very well. Um, if you know how to do it, let me know because I can't figure it out, but um, I can do it pretty simply with an image plane. Um, so it's probably worth knowing how to do, so I will show you how to do it now. So uh, I've got a scene set up here already just with our robot guy. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a image uh, to the background of our camera. So this is going to be assigned to our perspective camera, which is the camera that I'm looking through right now. So if we go to in the viewport view, image plane, import image. And uh, I'm going to grab the image that I've already decided on, which is this one here. And this is just a f image of Burke Street Mall in Melbourne. Now, um, you'll see that no matter what you do with the camera, um, the image remains in the same place. And this is important to note because basically what you're going to be doing is using your perspective camera to line up with the image plate that's in the background. And that'll make sense a little bit more in a second. But before we do that, we want to make sure that our aspect ratio is the same as what the image aspect ratio is. So um, if I just bring up the properties of this image from Windows Explorer, so I've just got it here on Windows Explorer. Um, if I go properties, I'll show you what they are. Uh, so if I go to the details, you'll see that dimensions are 5184 by 3456, and that's probably a little bit too high res for uh, rendering. I mean, you could obviously render at that resolution, but um, it's just for the sake of this tutorial, I am going to divide those dimensions by four. Uh, so to define those dimensions, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the render settings and uh, we're going to adjust the width and the height. So if I have divided those by four, the uh, width is going to be 1296 and the height is going to be uh, 864. And I didn't do that in my head. I worked that out beforehand. So I'm not some sort of math genius, just so you know. Um, all right. So what else? Let's turn the uh, gate on and you'll see it has now framed that correctly. Um, we've got no bleed or anything like that. The next thing we need to set up is the camera. So the camera needs to mimic the camera that I used to take this photo. Um, I used a Canon uh, EOS, uh, what was it? 600D, I think. Um, actually, I can show you that. So with the details back here, you can see that I used the 600D and it will show you the f-stop and the exposure and all that junk. I'm not going to get too deep into that, but the um, thing that I really want to focus on here is the focal length. And that's going to be important because um, the focal length creates uh, perspective distortion. And to get a good uh, read on the perspective, it's good to adjust this in your camera. So with your outliner, which you can get to by going Windows Outliner, select your perspective, um, uh, perspective camera, which is the one we're using. Go to the attribute editor and uh, go to focal length and change it to the focal length of your image. So uh, in this case, it'll be 55. Um, and if you're using something like an iPhone, um, you can check out your uh, focal length the same way. Um, if you've just got no zoom on it, um, you can just Google the, uh, the iPhone, your model lens specifications, and it will give you the focal length there. Uh, but because I use this EOS, um, that's the focal length that was specific for this shot. All right, so the next thing we need to do is make sure that we've got this guy sitting in perspective. We can use the grid to help line us up. So if you're doing this for the first time, I'd recommend um, having something uh, with, as you can see, uh, some something that gives you some sort of simulated grid line. So this image has got a um, tiled sort of floor, which will help us line up the shot and keep it in perspective. So if we sort of move this around a little bit, um, zoom in zoom out basically what we're trying to do is get these grid lines lined up with these lines that are already existing in the real world i'm probably going to have to zoom out a bit and obviously also something you may notice is that um, the camera is on a slight tilt so it's not going to be perfect and um, that's fine i'm not looking to make this an exact 
uh, replica. But as you can see, I've got the image plane going horizontally, roughly correct, and I've got this line here and this line here lined up, which means that we're roughly in perspective. Uh, so now that we've done that, let's go to View, Bookmarks, Edit Bookmarks, and create a new bookmark. So well, no matter what we do with this, we can get it to line back up just by clicking that. Uh, so let's scale our model up just slightly and move them around in the scene. So we can do a little bit, something a little bit more interesting and go back to our bookmark. Uh, it might be a bit big that way. I still feel like it's not quite right. This is very, like you're gonna have to fiddle with this quite a bit to get it just right, but it's fine if you don't get it right the first time, just keep going and um, it's easy to create new bookmarks and just decide on which one looks best once you get there. All right, so let's turn the grid off for now. And we can see that that sort of looks like it's in perspective. It's maybe not perfect. I might need to tilt the camera a little bit. Um, so what we're gonna to need to do now is add in an image, uh, a polygon plane. Uh, so just in the shelf, if you're modeling, this probably make more sense. Uh, just select the plane and I'll create a plane. And I'm gonna scale that up um, and move it. So we've got our plane. Let's go back to our render man shelf and we need to apply a shader to it. So the shader is really important um, as it will tell render man how the surface um, should be reacting. So we're gonna try and make the surface similar to this concrete surface that our guy is sitting on. Um, so with your hyper shade editor, which you can get to by clicking that button there, select your uh, new material that you've just created and it will be called Pixar Surface 1 if it's a new document. I'm just going to call this Ground Plane. Um, and let's grab the color of the ground by using the by clicking the color and then using the picker. Get the same sort of gray. We can adjust the roughness. There's going to be a slight bit of specularity uh, and the specularity roughness is going to be quite high as well because it's concrete. Now, if I rendered this, obviously you'd be able to see the, uh, the, the ground plane, so that's no good. We want to create the, a holdout out of this plane. Um, so a holdout will collect shadows and reflections, um, but ignore geometry, essentially. So uh, a holdout can be applied to any piece of geometry. It doesn't have to be a plane. It could be, uh, it could be a box, it could be a sphere, it could be a, a, a wavy surface, it could be anything. But the objective of your holdout is to simulate the geometry in which is collecting shadows or reflections. So in this case, a ground plane. Um, so select your geometry uh, that you want to be the holdout, which will be the ground plane. And then we're gonna click this button here, which is the holdout button. And you'll see it turns basically invisible. So um, what that does, if I go to my render stats on my plane, it basically enables the holdout. And if you go to your render settings and go to advanced, uh, image plane and sample filter will be turned on. Um, and I think adapt all has to be on. Um, it, ha it is in the docs, so I'm just gonna enable it there. So if we do a render now, um, you'll see that that plane is not visible, but it is uh, collecting shadows. Okay, so just with the default light on, um, we can already see that we've got our guy. He looks like he's sitting in the, in the world relatively correctly, so I'm just gonna keep going with that. Um, but obviously the lighting is all off, so we need to change that. So I'm just gonna maximize my again. Um, and what we're gonna do is we wanna simulate the light of our, um, our scene. So this is an outdoor scene, so it will have the sun, obviously, unless you've got an overcast, um, overcast day, then it will be a more diffused, uh, probably environment light that you would use. So let's drop in a, uh, by right clicking on the little light icon, distant light. Just gonna move this somewhere so I can see it. And I'm also gonna add in some more geometry. And this is just gonna be a sort of a placeholder. I'm just gonna drop a square in. Um, and the reason I'm doing this is because I wanna mimic the shadows and how they're being cast. So what I'm trying to do with this cube is um, mimic the angle of the shadow that's been cast by this pole here in the foreground. Um, so we've got the, uh, we've, so all the shadows are going the same direction. So I'm just gonna move that forward slightly um, and then do a new IPR. All right, so you can see that our shadows are not facing the correct direction. Um, so, so let's make some slight adjustments. So at the moment we want the angle of our 
um, of our cube's shadow to be parallel to this one here. And we'll worry about getting the shadow like darkness and stuff correct in a moment, but for now we just wanna get that correct. All right, so it's roughly going the same direction. Um, however, our um, the, the X um, rotation doesn't seem to be correct. If you look at this piece of geometry here, this um, bi bicycle bar, um, the sun appears to be a bit higher. So if I rotate this down, we should start to see the shadow being a lot shorter. So this was about 10 o'clock in the morning. So the sun's getting fairly close to being high overhead and it would have been summer, I'm assuming. So um, the sun will be roughly over here at about midday, one o'clock. So it's getting close to midday almost. All right, that looks pretty close, I think. So let's stop that IPR. Um, so I wanted to make some other adjustments to the, um, to the light source. Um, because I know it's the morning, um, I'm gonna just add a little bit of uh, warmth to our to our light source um, because the closer it is to dawn, uh, the more the more saturation the light's gonna receive. Um, and also you'll notice our shadows are completely black. That's because they're receiving no atmospheric illumination. So um, no reflection from the sky. And you can see if you just look here in the image, um, it's a clear blue day. So let's add in an environment shader um, and then just set it to sky blue. Uh, and we can do that by selecting this and by right clicking and then click dome light and then with our dome light properties uh, let's go to color use the color picker and just pick our sky blue color and it's just that simple and then let's run another ipr and see how that looks all right so you can see it's uh illuminate those shadows quite a lot probably a little bit too much so we're going to need to back that off just a touch probably oh, quite a bit actually maybe 0.2 yeah, 0 0.2 looks maybe right, maybe 0.15. Yeah, that's good. Um, also, I think our ground plan needs to be a little bit more specular because we don't seem to be collecting much specularity, um, just shadows, so uh, but we'll need to increase that somewhat. Um, it also appears that our, our distant light isn't quite enough, uh, isn't quite bright enough, and I think I can actually adjust that by increasing the angle, which will soften the shadow uh, edges just a bit as well. So let's grab our distant light and let's increase the uh, angle to say 0.8, which has increased our illumination as well. Maybe a bit too much, 0.75. Actually, let's go 0.8 and then reduce our intensity to say 40,000. Okay, so with that render all the way up, uh, we're starting to look pretty close to being correct. Now, I would say that this model's have probably got a little bit too saturated a, um, a texture on him. Uh, also, I actually haven't subdivided him, so he's a little bit chunky, uh, but that's fine. And our shadows are still a little bit sharp, um, so I wanna push that uh, angle quite a lot more, I'd say, but as I do that, I'm gonna have to reduce the intensity. So let's make the angle maybe 1.5. All right, that's roughly correct. Um, I could play around this with this all day um, and get nowhere, so that's gonna be fine for now. Um, if I was gonna really try and get this to look realistic, obviously this is not perfect, um, I would start thinking about other light sources that would be affecting our model. So he would actually be receiving some slight bounce light also from probably this, um, the edge of this. So I'd add in a small light on the right-hand side of him. And I know there's some shops on the left-hand side and they've got, uh, glass windows so he'd be re uh, receiving some bounce light from there as well um, so and you can see it's sort of illuminating those shadows and stuff there so um, yeah I'd probably add in some more lights around this guy but for a simple scene I think this is getting pretty close um, so the final thing that we want to adjust to get this look a little bit more accurate is the material of our holdout so let's grab our um, hypershade editor select our ground plane um, and let's add a lot more reflection and just back it off. So you can see it's starting to reflect onto the ground a bit, which it should because concrete has um, quite a, a little bit of specularity to it, uh, depending on how rough it is. Um, it should be diffusing the, the um, reflection quite a lot uh, because it's not polished or anything like that. 
but um, it should actually be creating some reflection. Um, so that's not bad, it's probably a little bit much, so let's pull it back a bit. And because our um, model is so uh, such a high value color, um, it will create, it, the light will bounce off them um, and reflect onto our surface quite a lot. So that's looking pretty good actually, I think I'll keep it at that. So yeah, that's pretty much all there is to creating holdouts. Um, you can create much more complex scenes. If you're doing like an indoor environment, you'd have to be wary of many more lights in on your model. So if uh, there's multiple windows, you'd also be getting reflections from um, other objects in the scene. So you can create holdouts that are just, um, just used for reflection. Um, but for a very basic tutorial, I think this is pretty much a good place to stop. So hopefully that's helped some of you guys out. Um, like I said, I'm not an expert at this. I haven't been doing holdouts for very long, only like two weeks. However, I think it's pretty fun to be able to do them. Um, so this is probably a good starting point for a lot of you. Uh, so if you like this tutorial, make sure you click the like button so other people can find it. And um, if you would like to see more tutorials every week, um, I do a couple every week uh, for Render Man and other CG products. Uh, click that subscribe button and subscribe. Otherwise, uh, that's pretty much it for now. So thank you for watching and happy rendering.